Welcome back to the program. Cody Savage now joined on the line by UFC middleweight standout. It's Elias Spartan Theodoru. Elias, thanks for taking the time and dropping by the show today. Hey, my pleasure. Now, you've kind of trained over, all over the place a little bit. You've uh, been at Head Rush over in Toronto, obviously Tap Out Gym in Burlington. You spent some time with Chris Wyman over in New York. Now you're calling TriStar Gym over in Montreal, the full-time camp for this one anyways. Uh, why the decision to make the change? Um, many different, actually. Uh, well, obviously, I've actually been here quite a few times before, uh, more as a, uh, a fluid thing in the sense that I trained actually here for much of my camp for uh, my Halifax fight. But... Um, this one, I really, I, I, I chose this one because, honestly, aside from the great training partners, the great coaches, um, and everything in between, it's the traveling. Um, in Toronto, uh, just to put in perspective, being here in Montreal and being close to the gym has saved 17 hours in my week in regards to travel time. So that's uh, pretty much a whole extra day throughout the week that I can just be myself. Well, definitely. I mean, 17 hours, that's a considerable amount of time that you could obviously be focusing towards other avenues. Uh, now, as I mentioned, now that you're at TriStar, and like you said, you've been there in the past, now you're kind of making that regular move. Do you anticipate this to be something that'll be for all your camps, you'll say, at TriStar? Or are you still open to going to other areas and learning from other coaches still? Um, still always open. Uh, for me, it's all about the journey, right? Like, um, I love uh, this traveling the world and taking it all in. Uh, to be completely honest, that's Part of like the biggest allure to mix martial arts to me is the fighter's journey, and that I mean every every different avenue, every different coach, every different uh, training partner. But um, for the most part, TriStar will be uh, home in regards to my camp. Now, a lot of guys are always kind of looking out for uh, high-level coaches to kind of bring with them. You're kind of in a disadvantaged spot there. You can only pick three guys. I mean, you have so many good coaches around you, so many good guys that you work with. So come June, June 18th in Ottawa against Sam Alvey. Who do you anticipate the three guys in your corner to be? Well, um, then that's exactly right. I have so many people, like you said, uh, uh, from the beginning and then everyone else that I've collectively uh, worked with. Uh, for this one, again, every opponent's different. So uh, the people that I'm going to bring with me is obviously Faraz at the head. He's like the mastermind putting it all together. Crew Ash, who um, I hooked up originally uh, at the um, Ultimate Fighter house, being stuck in the house with him for seven weeks. We got to work together, and he really gets my style. And then uh, Chad Pearson. Um, who's my wrestling coach. Um, and basically together they all have uh, their bits and pieces to create uh, my next victory. Now Chad Pearson's been with you for a long time, so he kind of knows all the different nicknames and all the uh, evolutions of one Elias Theodora, but currently people are calling you the Spartan. Uh, in the past you've been known as Aladdin, but you've also been known as the Cardio King, and that's one that was always fitting to me, because you've always just broken down opponents with your greediness, your aggressiveness, and that cardio. In your last fight against Tiago Santos, though, it, it appeared that maybe five minutes in your battling fatigue for that first time. Is that something of just next-level opponents being able to do that to a guy, or is that maybe something that was gone wrong in the preparations leading up to the fight with Santos? Um, I think with Santos, um, obviously being my first fight, um, the way it kind of works out is there's a lot of silver lining. In it. There's a lot of benefits in, in that being my first loss. I think I lost the fight. He didn't win the fight. Um, a little bit of it is the sense that I've never lost before. So at a certain point, I did get maybe hit a little hard and component of try not to win. And instead of trying to win, uh, try not to lose is kind of the mindset I was kind of at. And also, obviously, uh, again, another part of the uh, silver lining is I, I struck the striker in the first round, and I really confused him. And the plan was to do that and then go into the second round and try and take him down. It wasn't working. And me being undefeated and kind of not being cognizant about the fact that, hey, maybe I should go back and do what I, I did in the first round. Instead, I was stubborn, and I was grabbing his, trying to grab his leg and say, this always works. So I doubled down on the wrong thing. I think the fatigue has less to do with actual physicality and more just the mental the mental fatigue of, hey, this isn't working, but I'm still doubling, doubling down on the wrong thing. Well, I mean, for a long time you were kind of known as that undefeated guy, but we always hear time and time again people always say it's good to get that first loss. It's good for fighters to experience that for the first time. In your case, with so much of the kind of, I'm not going to say the aura, but so much of the personality being around Mr. Undefeated, is it almost a relief to be able to take that first loss and be like, I learned so much more from that than going out there and completely barrel rolling guys like I've done in the past? Um, well, obviously it's much, much, much uh, catcher, uh, say, uh, never lost a round, never lost a fight. Best thing about looking, uh, best thing about winning a fight is not looking like you got in a fight. And definitely my last one, I looked like I got in a fight. Um, but like you said, um, there's obviously so much that comes out of it. It's not whether you fall, it's whether you rise from the occasion. And 
like I, like you said, I, I think I've learned tremendous of from this because up until now I never really lost a round, and um, now I kind of know what to expect to um, what it is, what basically those deep waters are, and um, also the fact that it was a very close fight. Like um, I didn't go out on my shield. I I, I kept on pushing. The, no matter who I fight, whether I win or lose, it's going to be a tough fight. There's no quit in me. At no point did I give up. Like no point did my my body language. I've watched the fight obviously many times. At no point did it show that I, I there was any quit in me. And for me, as and as any fighter, um, that's a very important thing. Um, when when the toughs get going, do you get going? And I kept on going. Um, obviously, I've learned tremendous from this. Um, I think uh, one of the one of the positive things that I kind of took out of this, uh, even though being a transient individual where I was constantly jumping from different gyms to gyms, um, I was doing way too much of a uh, fight camp oriented. With um, TriStar, I've been here for three months, give or take. So um, being at one specific thing and constantly growing, and I've known I was going to fight my opponent for now three months, that's giving me plenty of time to um, basically, along with prepare for him, um, mentally, physically, and uh, everything in between, um, just kind of be the spaghetti rule, throw everything on the wall and see what sticks. And he's a, he's a, he's a big puncher, and I'm looking, uh, and I've obviously, I've, I've creased everything on social media. I know all of his injuries and everything in regards to that, and I know his weaknesses and his strengths, and I know where mine are too. So I'm really excited to just show everyone what I've worked so hard on. Well, as you mentioned, you've been preparing for Sam Allen for three months now, but it seems like there's even been a rivalry going back before that. Now, another guy you've been calling out as well, Ed Herman, seems like there's a bit of a trend here. I mean, you keep calling out these ginger fighters. Elias, is there like a deep-seated vendetta going on here? <laughs> no, it just kind of worked out that way. Although, June uh, 18th will be forever known as Kicking Ginger Day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's been talks with that hair versus hair matchup, but I, I almost feel like you're in a Paige Van Zandt situation. If you were to shave your head, there'd just be a protest of like, no, 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 you can't be doing this right now. Yeah, well, um... Well, like I, I've said in a tweet before, um, him asking for a hair match is like us tr uh, trading pink slips for a Ferrari versus uh, a Volvo. Um, it is <laughs> no point. Um, although he is known for a smile, and I'm very much looking forward to wiping it off on June 18th. Now, he's known for a good wrestling. I mean, he's a Team Quest guy, been there with uh, alongside Dan Henderson for a long time. And he's also known for a wicked left hook and some ever-improving stand-up game. But um, as I mentioned, he's kind of one of the guys that you had on your radar beforehand. So what is it about Sam Alvina's style that you found intriguing for yourself? Um, just like he's, uh, he's got these old man wrestling tricks. Um, he's been doing it for a long time. He has a wicked amount of uh, experience. He's going to have 20 plus more fights than I am in his kickboxing or whatever like that. But I think there's going to be diminishing returns in regards to his, um, his just experience. Um, I think he's, he's said in many of his uh, podcasts that I've preached um, the fact that uh, there's certain parts of his body that are, that are injured, and I'm looking forward to take advantage of that. Um, he recently got his jaw broken. I, uh, by one of his training partners, uh, who my training partner will be fighting, Sean Strickland. Um, Tom Breeze is fighting him next week. Um, and it just shows that, again, he has all this mileage on him. As a, as a fighter, it's less like that. Um, if you give him an inch, he takes a mile. Um, he's the kind of person that wants a dog fight and wants you to just go to bang because he's got a hell of a chin and, um, and a mean right hook. Um, obviously, it's because he's, not, he's a, a wrestler. So uh, in wrestling, the right hand in the right shot is what you want, and he carried that through into mixed martial arts, so he's got a mean right hook. But I think he's um, flat-footed in many regards, and uh, it gives me an opportunity to just tee off on him at many different angles. I think he's um, very skilled in what he does, but uh, only in that regard, and I'm looking to take advantage of the fact that it's a mixed martial arts fight. Well, you certainly did your research, and therefore it should be a good performance on your end. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to you, Elias. I wish you nothing but the best. And if you want to see Elias Theodore back in action, you can do so June 18th, Fight Night Ottawa. He will be in action taking on Sam Alvey in a very, very highly anticipated undercard matchup. I would just want to thank you again very much for the time, Elias, and uh, best of luck to you. Always my pleasure, brother. Thanks.